I'm installing the Project Solar sub panel on this home so that we can integrate the Project Solar Power Bank 2000 to be able to power some of the loads when the power is out. The first thing you want to keep in mind is safety. Um, you are dealing with electricity, which is dangerous. Um, you should always turn off the panel before you work on it to make sure there's no hazard of being shocked. And also, if you're not familiar with electricity or you're not an electrician, you don't have experience, you may want to have someone do this installation for you that has been trained and is qualified. All right, the first thing that you're going to want to do is select some breakers um, on this panel that are going to be loads that are backed up. Um, this is the power bank 2000 that we're installing. So it's a 2000 watt um, inverter. So you don't want to back up any loads that are going to exceed that 2000. So for this home, we're thinking of things like lights, maybe a garage door, um, a refrigerator, um, maybe home Wi-Fi, some, some basic things that would be, you know, very convenient during a power outage to have, you know, electricity too. With the Project Solar Power Bank 2000, you can add expansion battery packs to it. You are limited to a 2000 watt output, but you can go to an 8000 watt hour capacity for the battery system. You can think of it like this, adding the expansion batteries is like adding more gas to your fuel tank, but it isn't necessarily going to increase your engine size. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the cover on this sub panel where the power bank 2000 is going to be connected. I want to locate the circuits that I'm going to be backing up, and I also want to verify that electricity is turned off or disconnected to this sub panel. Keep in mind that the setup that you're buying is limited to a certain amount of output, so you want to be careful that you're selecting for backup so that the system is able to provide enough electricity to run those loads. I'm going to identify a location for this transfer switch and install it close to the sub panel. You need to keep in mind that the conduit and the wires that come with the transfer switch are a set length. I'm just going to install a few inches to the right of the panel and then I'm going to run the conduit and then cut into the wall underneath the panel. The Project Solar transfer switch is decently heavy so it is important that you make sure to get some strong connections um, to the wall and to make sure it's screwed on there good. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the hole kind of at an angle so that I'm aiming for a knockout in the bottom of this sub panel. Once I've removed the knockout um, on the back bottom of the sub panel, I'm going to feed the flexible metallic conduit uh, around those wires that come on the transfer switch and then feed that through the hole and then up through the knockout in the bottom of the solar panel. There is an angled bracket that comes with the flexible metallic conduit that I'm feeding through the wall. And then it goes through that three quarter inch knockout. And then you have a lock washer um, that goes on um, that, that you can tighten down. In this video, I've also added a grounding bushing and a one hole strap. Um, my preference to make sure that that conduit is secured to the wall and that the um, conduit is grounded. When you're installing this, I would make sure to comply with any local codes or regulations for how you need to do the electrical. Refer to the manual for the proper installation of this product, but let me give you an overview on how these wires get connected in order for this system to work. The transfer switch has wires that have been pre-run from the transfer switch that goes through the conduit and into the sub panel. It's a little bit confusing on where all the wires go. And so I wanted to give you a basic overview. Please refer to the installation manual and any guides for the installation of this, but this should give you a better idea and help you not be confused with this or overwhelmed. So you will have a white wire that feeds through on the transfer slide on the transfer switch. That's your neutral and that goes to the plug that will be installed on the cover of the transfer switch. 
With the plug, you'll have a three port connector and you'll have a ground wire. The ground wire goes with the screw and the other ground wire on the cover of the transfer switch. The black and red wire will actually go into that three port connector. And then the neutral goes on the silver screw on the connector. Once you have that tied in, you can reinstall the cover and install uh, the uh, input connection. On the sub panel side, you will have a neutral wire, which is white, a ground wire, which is green, and then you'll have eight other wires, four are red and four are black. You want to tie in the ground wire with the other ground wires on the ground bar in your sub panel. You want to tie in the neutral wire with your other neutrals on the neutral bar. And you want to identify the pairs on the red and black wires. Each wire will have a little stamp on it. And so you want to identify the red and black A pair, the red and black B pair, C pair, and D pair. Then you're going to go to your breakers. You're going to identify which breaker is going to be backed up. You're going to remove the wire that is ran to the breaker. A red wire is then going to be terminated on the breaker. Black wire is going to be connected to the black wire from the transfer switch for the A pair. We just finished up the installation of the Project Solar sub panel. Um, we have the Power Bank 2000 plugged in and we're gonna turn this system on. So currently there's no power to the house. What we're going to do is switch this over to the battery, verify that the breakers are on, and now we're currently powering a few lights in the house, the refrigerator, and a, a few other small loads.